Hey everybody, it's your friendly neighborhood saxman Alex here. If you haven't already, check out my other series. My performance series, my sax ed series, and my chat with me series. And don't forget to subscribe, it's so easy. Just click the button and hit the notification bell to be up to date on everything from your friendly neighborhood saxman Alex. You may be wondering, why do you have a neck strap on? Very good question. Also, this is from the Boston Sack Shop. So if you have any time, you need a new strap, check it out. But again, why do I have the strap? Well, it's from the Boston Sack Shop. I went to the Boston Sack Shop a couple months ago to get my new tenor. It was an awesome experience and a really cool trip. It was also very humbling during a pandemic to go from New York to Boston and to make sure that I was healthy. And gladly, I got tested before and after and tested negative for both times. And we quarantined several weeks before and after to make sure that everybody was safe. But enough about that. Since I got my tenor, I've been playing it and it has been such a great experience and I'm so happy to have this new tenor as a part of my family. Having my alto, my soprano, and now my tenor. Now the moment you've all been waiting for, I know you want to see the tenor, so here it is. Now this is no ordinary tenor. This tenor is a Summer Mark VI made in 1964 and it is practically brand new. This thing was something that caught my eye and caught my wife's eye when we were looking into the showroom where all the tenors were and it was beautiful. There's not a scratch on this horn. It's practically been in the closet ever since the previous owner had it. There was a person who had bought this horn and didn't really learn how to play the sax. So they kept it in their closet this entire time until now. Of course, pandemic. They didn't know what to do, so they sold this sax to me. <laughs> what better time to buy a saxophone than during a pandemic? This sax is amazing. It has a beautiful sound and tone whenever you play it. And I have a couple of videos out where you can hear me playing, especially this last video I just made, so go check that out. But there's some really cool, nice little features about this particular saxophone that I think we should all observe and admire. I know there's a huge sax community out there who adore and collect Mark VI saxophones. And I myself, I'm not, again, I am not a gear person, but when it comes to Mark VI's, I have a Mark VI tenor, a Mark VI alto, and a Mark VI soprano, which kind of makes me a little obsessive, addicted, snobby. But in any case, they are all great horns. And the legend says, for those of you who don't know, Mark VI is made during a period after World War II, meaning there was scarce materials, and the raw metal being used was primarily for tanks, weaponry, any type of military use that metal could have was brought to the militaries across here. So when the war was over, supposedly, as legend says, Selmer grabbed all the scrap metal from areas in France, tank metal, and created these babies. Now, I'm not saying that this is the best horn, but I have tried other horns such as Khan's, I've tried Martin's, I've tried Buchers, i tried King's. They're all excellent horns, but I think my hands ergonomically feel the best on Selmer's, especially Mark VI's. And I think that I can play as least restricted as I want to be on this horn than any other horn. In my vlog with the Boston Sack Shop, I tried out five different horns. There was, I think, four Mark Sixes and one Super Balance Action, which was really, really, really nice. All of them possessed great qualities, but I think this one overall surpassed each one of them. Surpassed it in intonation, surpassed it in ease of range, it surpassed it in restriction, meaning it was a free-blowing horn. I had no problem with the low range or the high range, and it just gave such a buttery tone that I knew that this was the horn. Buttery. 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 Not recommended for those with lactose intolerance. <laughs> Got my Birch Coffee. It's a small business in New York. Super good coffee. I recommend it. Sponsor me. But anyways, here are a couple photos that I want to show you of the sax and how beautiful it is and how rare it is to find such a beautiful horn. First, if you look at the bell, what we can see is the Summer's beautiful logo and etching of this nice flower. So I heard from one of the Summer representatives that there are certain markings, some certain unique markings that determine which factory and what time this saxophone was made. 
in this particular etching, if you look at the R marking below the Selmer and the Elkhart New York distribution stamp that they put on every Mark VI, the R has no squiggly lines below, above, or to the left and right of it. This gives an indication of where the factories are, and each factory has a specific marking. Top one, bottom one, left one, and right one have their specific ones. On my Alto, there's actually two squiggle lines on the left and right of the R making it a specific factory that it was made in. Then if we take a look at where they etch out Mark VI, there it is, has the little R on to the right of it, and it also has the Mark VI etch. On some Mark VI's, especially the older ones, I'd say older than 56, the Mark VI etching is not where the link is between the actual coupling of the body of the horn and the bell, but it's actually below the thumb rest where the octave key is. So that's kind of interesting to know. You can see the pearls, the pads, the spatula keys. It all looks super beautiful. There's no cosmetic damages. If there is any, it's probably because of me, because I've been playing it constantly since I've gotten it, because it's a beautiful horn. And then something that's really, really nice that you can see is the top neck. It's very rare nowadays to find a neck with a painted blue S on it. And when you find it, it's just super beautiful to see. It's almost completely intact. There's just some minor nicks there, but you can see that the blue S is there. That's really nice. I don't have it on my Alto, so I wish I did. I could probably draw it in if I wanted to, but that wouldn't look really good. Anyways, beautiful. And then on top we have our beautiful saxophone mouthpiece. I think this is a mouthpiece cafe and the Boston Sax Shop Reed coupled with the superlative ligature that I bought from the Boston Sax Shop. So if you want to check those out, check out their website. All in all, this is an amazing sax that was tuned by Jack himself. He never sells horns unless they are ready in performance condition. So that's an added bonus when buying a saxophone from Jack is that he makes sure that when you leave with that saxophone, that it will last you an entire year before an easy repair. And to this day, nothing is wrong with it actually. I've had mixed experiences with other horns and buying them where as soon as I go home and start playing it, something falls off like a cork or some type of felt falls off and I'm like, well, what do I do now? I can't play it anymore, it's leaking. But not with this one. This one, I bought it in October, December, even with the winter, with no humidity, it's beautiful. It plays like nothing, buttery as always, and I love it. So thank you for that, Jack. Thank you for recommending me this horn. It's an amazing horn. And if you want to buy a saxophone from the Boston Sax Shop, I highly recommend it because Jack knows what he's doing. He knows the history of every horn and he makes sure he gives you the right price and fine tunes it before you leave. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you like my beautiful saxophone and there will be more videos of me showing my saxophone off because why not? Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Instagram and Facebook for more standards, beats, and ballads. Happy holidays and stay sexy.